Now, whether you are just beginning as a first year coach or you've been coaching for years, I have a bunch of resources for you at flagfootballwithcoachd.com. Wanted to share that with you before we jump into this video. Uh, one of the main things that I heard when I was just starting out was, hey man, I need plays, I need practices, I need drills, etc." So I put all of that together for you and it's here, it's called the Complete Coach Package. It comes with all of my playbooks. Um, it even comes with this, which is very popular. It's basically uh, being able to print out wristband inserts just like this for each age group. So I've put that in here. The next thing after that is this boot camp includes the complete coach package, but then it also has 30 videos, exclusive videos of me walking you through how to coach. And then finally, I'll show you this complete coach play builder. Basically, you can import all of my plays into this play builder and you can create your own playbook. And then you can print out wristbands. You can print out one per page, four per page, whatever. Super simple to use. You can grab a one month, six month annual. Make sure you grab your 10% off anything here. And then finally, this is what started it all. I started making videos in my backyard <laughs> just for my teams, uh, but offense, defense, drills, how to coach new players, all that stuff. Subscribe here. We just passed 15,000. Here to give you everything you need to crush it as a complete coach. All right, let's jump into this week's video. Hi, everyone. This is Coach D and Coach Sammy. Sammy has now officially moved from player status to assistant coach. Very excited about that. You know, she's been playing. She, she was, what, seven, six, seven, somewhere around there. We used to make videos back in the day, and now she's going to be helping on the coaching side as well. So what we want to do today is bring you defense techniques that work. And the first one, let's dive right into it, is something that is super effective on making sure that the offense has no idea what your defense formation is going to be. So right here, you see a couple cones here. What we've done, and a dog, we have outlined the seven yard mark past the line of scrimmage. So right here is the line of scrimmage. This is the seven yard mark outside of that. Now in most leagues, a rusher has to be seven yards back, right? Well, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the offense, the quarterback, doesn't know who's rushing, but they also don't know what my formation's going to be. So let me show you. Let's go to this seven yard mark. So let's say we're going to do our Husker. Husker is usually where we have one person up front, we have three back here, and then we have a safety in the back. And if you're doing 6v6 or 7v7, you might have two up here, two back here, etc. But you get the idea. So the formation is usually, okay, I've got three here, got one up there, one back there. They kind of get to know on the offense what you're going to do. What we do now is we get everybody lined up seven yards off the mark. Okay? Why do we do that? They have no idea. Now let's say I'm going to rush, but Sammy is going to be on that, let's say, one yard off the, the line of scrimmage. Right away, let's say the ball is hiked, both of us start running, they have no idea who is going to be rushing, right? So let's come up here. So let's say our formation looks like this. Right? We've got the line of scrimmage, then we have a linebacker, then we've got three cornerbacks and a safety. Well, what we do is we bring everybody up, right? So everybody's lined up just like this. And then when the ball is hiked, they move to their different position. Now immediately, they have no idea what's coming, right? And then on the rusher, this moves to our second tip of today. What are some good techniques for a rusher? Well, right away, what we want to do, let's say these three are now at the seven yard mark and one of them is going to be rushing. Now, should we always have the same person rushing? No. No. How do we decide who is going to be rushing? Um, it's kind of who's pretty fast and can pull flags well. Okay. And also, um, you normally decide before you 
start the play? Yeah, so in that, before we line up, right, on that seven yard line, all of us are together, we kind of quickly huddle, and we say, you're rushing this time, right? And then we mix it up. So you're constantly mixing up who's going to be rushing. Love that part. Now, you had said something earlier, which I thought was really smart. What are we looking for? What are we trying to identify on that quarterback? The quarterback's weak side. The weak side. Why do we want to identify that? Um, because then you have a better chance of them throwing a bad ball or not or getting a sack. So basically, we want to shut down that strong side. So let's say, <clears throat> let's say the quarterback, right? The quarterback usually runs this way because that's their strong side. And then they can throw the ball, right, from their strong side and they're avoiding the rusher coming in this way. So what we want to do is we want to start shutting down that strong side and pushing them to their weak side. So that is what you do. Now, another thing you had said is we want to keep that kind of for the first half. Now, what if we all of a sudden can identify in the first couple plays where their stronger weak side is? Do we make adjustments or do we keep going after the same You thing? adjust. You adjust. So another big one that we're going to be talking about today is making adjustments. Not only are you making adjustments on the field, meaning the players, let's say one rusher, right is not super effective so maybe i put them at, at this you know at this position instead i'm okay to make that adjustment right away but also if i start identifying a weak side i'm going to start attacking <laughs> that that strong side so that they're going in the wrong direction right so those are right off the bat two things that we want to focus on now another thing that that comes up as a new coach is should i run a zone or should i run man to man now how do we decide which one we should do um man to man is basically just if you have like an even matchup okay zone is just kind of a little bit easier and it's not necessarily doesn't have to be even yeah i would say if you are in the anywhere from pre-k all the way up to fourth fifth grade staying in a zone defense is safe for sure now if you do have even matchups that's great because here's the here's the deal with man-to-man -man. if you do go man-to-man -man and you keep on getting beat deep right they keep pulling everybody else on a short pass and then they keep running over the top and you just keep getting beat well then you'd have to make that adjustment right there man-to-man -man is usually a little bit more difficult when you are uh, on the younger ages but i will say this sammy if you are going to be doing man-to-man -man, here's one thing i've always said you want to be at least an arm width away at all times you never want to be further than an arm width away why do you think you want to be that close um so that they can't get away and also um it's easy to pull the flag or intercept yeah so if you do get that ball for whatever reason then i'm not like you know yeah. way over here i'm giving you space no i want to be right there so i can right i'm either going to go for the ball with one hand and then have my hand right here if you catch it i'm ready to go yep. for sure so you always want to be if you're going to go man to man try to do a matchup where you are right and and the way that you can do your matchups is sometimes you can bring in siblings you can bring in uh assistant coaches if you're looking for speedsters and you want to see like what that feels like you want to match that up uh beforehand all right so that's another great tip now let's say we're doing zone defense all right let's say these are our zones how do we know like how big my zone is um it's kind of just split up between how many people you're running okay so let's say there's three across here how big is my zone like where do i start and where do i finish uh the ends start on the uh Yeah, so let's think about it. Let's come up here. The way I think about this, Sammy, is I want to make sure that all the way over, it's covered. So this cone right here, this person has to be responsible all the way over. But if I have someone here, right, if I've got someone in the middle and they're not rushing, then I am okay to make sure that this whole side is covered. Because otherwise, if I keep on cheating over here, if I keep on just being over here and I'm watching 
and I'm, I'm looking over here, then they could easily have someone that I didn't even know come over this way and win that sideline and score touchdowns all, all day long. So you have to make sure if you are calling a defense that everybody knows where their zone is. Is this going to be, right? And is this going to be a rusher? Is this person rushing? Because then if this person is rushing, this person has to move over and you have to outline where that is. A lot of times I like to actually walk out on the field and say, this is your zone. And I'm walking it out with him. I might even put out cones for that zone. And then if this per right, you don't want them to have to make those decisions during the game. You want that to be crystal clear. Now, we did talk about this. What does staying home mean? Um, staying basically in your zone or in your box or circle. Okay. So, for example, let's say this one and this one are their zones and this one's going to be rushing now let's all go over here let's go to our zone so this is my zone that's sammy's zone now what if they do a fake over there should i go and attack it no no why because they could come back and cut your way so let's say I start going over here, and now I've left that entire part of the field open. It is wide open now. Out of nowhere, someone could cut across this way. They could come this way, right? So I need to make sure that I stay home. Stay home here, meaning I have this entire zone, right? I'm covering, sure, but I'm staying in this zone. Come on back. When can I leave my zone? Um, when the ball's either uh, been past the line of scrimmage, or uh, or the ball is behind you. Yeah. So let's say it's past the line of scrimmage. If the ball is past the line of scrimmage, this is our pat, our line of scrimmage. If it is handed off and someone goes past the line of scrimmage, I don't care where my zone is. I'm attacking that ball. If for some reason they do a fake handoff this way, I am staying home, right? Let's say they hand it off here. Let's say they hand it off and the person is right over there, but they haven't passed the line of scrimmage. Should I stay home or should I attack? Stay home. Stay home. The reason I want to stay home is because this person could, if they're, past, if they're behind the line of scrimmage, they could still throw the ball. All right, so I might have one linebacker here, one yard off, that might, if it's handed off, I'm going to start going in right away. Because once it's handed off, I can start running, but I don't want everybody to do that because if they grab the ball and they throw it, right, they have it past the line of scrimmage, they can still throw it, then I need to make sure that I stay home. But once they pass the line of scrimmage, either with a pass or with a handoff, boom, I get out of my assignment, and what do I do? Go for the ball. I go for that ball. And we're all going together, right? That's when we're all going together. Last one we wanted to talk about is, and this is, this is big, as they get a little bit older, man, what happens a lot of times is that cornerbacks, that means these over here and the safety, they get beat deep. What that means is a wide receiver gets behind them, right? A speedster gets behind them, and then they're in trouble. And then they throw it over the top, and there's touchdowns all day long. So how can we prepare our, our defense for those deep balls? So what was the technique you were talking about? Uh, you backpedal for five yards, and you turn around. Okay. So a nice, nice technique. So let's go ahead and, and do that here on the field. So let's say you're here. Now, she's going to backpedal for five yards. So if I'm running and I'm going straight down the field and I'm going full speed, now she can run with me, right? She can run with me if she backpedals for five. Why do I want to backpedal for five yards? Uh, in case they stay short if they're still in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're going short and they do a nice little, like, if I do a quick, 
like this, she can easily turn. But if she's already turned around, it's harder, okay? Another thing is, if you're back pedaling, which way do you turn? Do you turn out? Towards the quarterback. Towards the quarterback. So, you're going back, and then you turn. Towards the quarterback. You turn in. in. So if you're over here, which way would I go? In. In. So I'm running this way. And why do I want to do that? So you can still score the ball in. You can still see the ball. Yep, you can still see the ball as it comes. So that's five, five yards and then the turn and run. Here, let's do it. It's starting to rain here. It's wet. It's disgusting, but we're out here making it happen for you. So I just <sighs> so out of shape. So mad. <laughs> All right, so those are some techniques, six techniques. Make sure at the end, just think about this. It's okay to make your adjustments early. All right. If you're seeing that your team is getting beat short, don't continue with that formation that has three deep. Switch it up to maybe it's the Husker, maybe it's you know, now you're going to have three up front, two on the back. Whatever it is, it's important to make those adjustments, both with players, if they constantly are getting beat, it's okay to move them in, all right, and out, and then the uh, the formation. So, let's go through our list real quick. Um, first of all, zone versus man. Zone versus man, we said it, the time we want to go man is... When there's an even... Yes, Matchup. even matchups. Usually, younger it is better with zone defense. Even as they get older, it, it, it's best. Um, what did we say? Number two about our seven-yard line. What do we um, do there? Everyone lines up on seven, and then you adjust after the ball is hiked. That is exactly right. So I've got everybody looking the same. Everything looks the same to the offense. Or to the offense, and then right when the ball snapped, we go into our formation. Now with uh, the rusher. With the rusher, what am I looking for? Um, for the rusher, it's kind of like you want to find the quarterback's weak side. Yes. And you want to constantly rush full speed on their weak side. You want to you want to make sure you are going after. You actually want to you want to attack their strong side because and, it, and it's yeah and force them to their weak side, right? And you also want to make sure that you are switching up your. Rusher, yes. You don't want to always have the same rusher. Mix it up a little bit. I think that's very important as well. Uh, we also said uh, staying home. What does that mean? Uh, you stay in your zone. Stay in your zone. Stay in your zone unless or until the ball passes the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage. Even if they're doing fakes all day long, make sure you're following the ball and then boom. Once that ball goes across the line of scrimmage, you're attacking the ball. Yes, you're making adjustments. And then finally, we just learned the five yard, back pedal. the back pedal, and then you turn in as you are rushing. Do not let anybody behind you, otherwise you're gonna get burned. All right, you know what to do, get some this season, that's it. This is Coach D and Coach Sammy hanging out. If you like what you see, go ahead and, you know all the stuff, comments. Man, we're too old for this stuff. Uh, to comment and subscribe and all that. Just wanted to let you know, we just passed 15,000 coaches, subscribers, just in your position, in the backyard, trying to figure this whole thing out. We're here with you. We are giving you everything that we possibly can to help you crush it as a coach. If you need any kind of plays, practice schedules, anything, go to Flag Football with Coach D. You will find all the stuff that both Sammy and I use on a regular basis to crush it out there on the field. We'll see you soon.